Chola Adventure. Today we're checking out Cholul, Mexico, a charming little pueblo here in the state of the Yucatan that offers the conveniences of a town and the advantages of a city. myself in this little garden right next to the cathedral right here in Centro and there's all this there's all this cotton stuff all over the ground it really looks like it really looks like snow I'm really glad it's not snow it appears to be a cotton type of thing or something like that If you are curious about the local plants um, and the fruit that comes from these plants, this might be a great place to check out because you can see the different labels of the different plants on the trees. For example, right here we have guayaba, which you might be familiar with as guava. And guavas are really good, so if you ever run into a guayaba, check it out. So something you might find interesting about this park is it has its own cenote. Not sure that you can go in it or if there are specific times you can go in it, but it definitely looks pretty interesting. And I don't typically see a full cenote combined with a parque in normal context here in the Yucatan. So that's pretty cool. And it makes it a unique feature of Parque Cholul. Now let's talk about my first impressions of being here because I've actually never been up here and I love the vibes up here. It's really calm, uh, the streets are a little bit narrower, has a slightly more of a small town feel, but you know I wouldn't say it's exactly quieter. Uh, being in Merida, being that Merida so many colonias are surrounded in greenery um, and they still have that old charming feel. Depending on where you are in Merida, it could feel very similar. And that's because we're really not far. It's really, to get here, it's you know, less than 10 minute drive from the Periferico. And so it just, it really feels just like a little extension outside of Merida or another colonia here in Merida. But you know, that really seems to be what adds to the charm of living in Cholul. You have that experience of, of having smaller community, narrower streets, Tons of stores that you can go to within a short distance. A lot of shops, a lot of fruit stands. You also get the convenience of being able to go right into Merida at any time. Something else that may excite you about living in Cholul is just how close to the beach we are. We're only about 25 minutes away from the beach here. I mean, if you live deep in Merida, you kind of have to drive through a lot of the city in order to um, you know, get to the highway to get to the beach, but right up here, you know, Cholul is, is right next to the main highway, so yeah, you can get there in a breeze. We're also very close to some really nice shopping malls. Um, if you watch my last, one of my previous videos, you'll see La Isla. We're only about 15 minutes away from that mall and about a 10 minute drive from Plaza Alta Brisa, which is another really nice, convenient mall. And I haven't had any coffee today. So we're gonna check out this really cool coffee shop that I found, um, looks really nice. Um, I have my, I have some strong opinions about the coffee experience, my coffee experience here in Mexico. So.
so I'm gonna get some coffee, maybe some food, and share a little bit about how I feel about coffee. So let's, let's take a walk there. I love the houses here in the Yucatan. Each one is really unique, and it's really cool to see what everybody, um, you know, has put their energy into. It all comes out different. little bit about the coffee experience here in Merida. Now, it's not like the United States where I'm from, where everywhere you go has coffee options. No matter what restaurant you're at, they have coffee. And if that coffee comes out, even if it's not the best coffee, it's gonna be very strong coffee. So, it's not quite like that here. When you go to these smaller Mexican restaurants, um, you know, maybe somewhere that serves tacos, tortas, they probably won't have coffee, and if they do, it's gonna be some sort of, of different option. For example, I've literally had people, when I order coffee, hand me a mug, hot water, and instant coffee in a jar. <laughs> and I'm, hey, you know, it got the job done, can't complain. So now, we're in more of a remote tool, it appears to be. But on the contrary, there's also some really, really amazing coffee here. And if you know anything about Mexico, uh, the areas of Chiapas and Veracruz are specifically known for their coffee production. So places that really put a lot of effort, put a lot of thought, put a lot of care into their coffee, just like the majority of people put into their food around here, you're going to find some really, really great coffee options. So if you're a coffee lover and you move out here, um, and you can't find any good coffee places right away, don't worry. It's just a matter of finding some good places. I'll try to put some in the description, uh, some of some coffee places that I've discovered down here. Australia, here in Cholul, it was really good. Um, the food was on point. Their coffee, on point as well, very good. Um, man, look, I'm really kind of in the middle of nowhere here. Check this out. But one thing I do notice, um, you know, even the coffee that is really good and, and a lot of thought put into it, it's usually not as strong the same way that the coffee in the, Uni in the United States is, in my experience. Even when you go to a strange little restaurant and they serve you your, that coffee, it could taste like battery acid, but you can almost guarantee that it's going to caffeinate you. Here, you know, being, fitting the theme of everything being muy tranquilo, to me, I was taken aback at the lack of strength that the coffee provides here. But I've learned that that's not quite a bad thing. You know, I mean, I've found that pounding down as much caffeine I can in a short period of time might actually not be the best way to drink coffee or caffeine. Ooh, so now we're really getting out into the wild. Here in Cholul, you're gonna find more houses where across the street, it's just still undeveloped land. Merida too. The neighborhood that I'm in has some undeveloped land just like this. 
uh, but probably see a lot more of it here. If you're if you're sensitive to little critters, that's something you might want to consider moving out here. You're going to experience a lot more of that. Like definitely the iguana game has ramped up. It seems. It's really interesting. Every house in Merida and surrounding areas. Once you get more up to the Yucatan, um, you know each house really is like its own art piece. I keep on a construction site. There I am. Considering the temperature that it is right now, I'm surprised at how well I'm doing. I'm hanging in there. Probably because of this cold brew, but also there's a nice gentle breeze flowing through here, and that's what's nice. My goal was to find another park that's somewhere on the north side of Cholul. Didn't want to get stuck in the heat and not know where I'm going. So we'll walk back to the other park. I like it. I like it up here. I mean, it's really colorful. Uh, there's a lot of flowers up here. Um, there's a lot of hustle and bustle. Um, seems like a lot of really great local stores that are within cr close proximity of each other while still being relatively close to Merida, which has the re great resources and um, anything that you'll need in a city. your taxis here in Cholul. Buenas. Okay. Perfecto. Solo dos mangos. So the weather has progressed. To find an Uber out here to Cholul from uh, North Merida fairly easily um, it cost about 120 pesos and I just called an uber to go back and about again 120 pesos and it's coming in nine minutes update on the uber status so it looks like my ride dropped me and I got another one and I'm waiting for that one so wanted to update you on that I don't know if that's common here in Jalul but in all reality that happens to me in Merida sometimes uh, but we're waiting on uber number two a massive shout out to everybody who's come along with me on these adventures so far. Uh, really means a lot. And I know I was gone for a minute. I had to run back to the United States, uh, take care of some stuff. But I'm back. I'm back. We're going to hit the Yucatan. And in the next video, since I went back to the United States for the first time, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my experience returning back to the United States after two years living abroad. Uh, hit the subscribe button so you can stay tuned and all that good stuff. Like the video if you found this helpful, and we'll see you in the next one. Cannot wait. If you want to see more neighborhoods within the city of Merida, watch my video next where we tour three neighborhoods on the north side of Merida. Thanks for coming along.